I am just struck by all of the machinations that Rudy Giuliani is going through. He travels to Madrid at one point to meet the people involved with this prosecutor to see if there's anything on the Bidens. He travels to Warsaw at one point to meet with people who might know something. He's meeting with the former Ukrainian prosecutor. I mean, I said this last, last hour, but I'm not joking. Wouldn't it have just been easier for the president to talk about the economy? I mean, to win the next election, why are they going to these lengths? That, what does that tell you about what they think they need in, to win the next election? Well, I think it's clear what they think they need to win the next election. You know, you're talking about a president who's never cracked 50 percent approval rating in his entire presidency. It's never happened before. He's mired in the low 40s, and he understands that he has to win the next election like he won the last one and try and destroy his opponent, because he's never going to get to the point where uh, the affirmation is so resonant that he's going to prevail. And, and so they have a project. I mean, Joe Biden is leading in public polls by double digits right now. Wow. They do not want to run against him. They are trying to knock him out of the race. And that's what this project was all about. And it's why he's dispatched his political errand boy and not uh, diplomats to deal with these Ukrainians. Uh, I want to make another point, though. I was listening to Biana speak about the impact of all of these people coming and going. One of the impacts of people going is that you create a lot of places for folks who want to investigate or do reporting uh, to check with. There are many people, you know, there are people, uh, 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 Bolton was there. Uh, you mentioned the two previous DNIs. Uh, the permanent and acting who left during this period. You have the ambassador who was dismissed. And, you know, a after a while, if you antagonize everyone around you uh, and dispatch them, uh, you create larger problems for yourself. Uh, and I think that may be part of what's happened here. I do wonder, all three of you have said stuff which, which intrigues me. Um, you said a number of things were of huge interest. You bring up Rudy Giuliani. Right, you talk about comings and going, but I wonder if you're Nancy Pelosi this morning, if less is more, um, which is to say, yeah. to what extent can you focus on the two main issues that we've been raising here? Number one, um, how and to what extent did the president pressure a foreign leader to investigate a political opponent? Number two, was there a cover up, and if so, why? Those two questions alone don't necessarily even require all these other admittedly fascinating right. subjects everyone's bringing up here, Axe. Yeah, no, listen, I think she is absolutely right to want to slim this thing down to the thing that's right in front of us. It is current. It relates to the 2020 election. The urgency is clear. And for her purposes, look, her whole concern was this thing hanging over the election, uh, not just impacting the presidential election, but also uh, kind of a backlash to her own members uh, and, and who would be prone to the attack that they're so absorbed with impeachment that they're not working on anything else. So I think, uh, you know, in this case, uh, speed is, is, is essential. Clarity is essential. The, the, uh, we saw through the Mueller probe, as serious as some of those charges were, that they were, uh, they were complex. And the longer you went on, the more you, had, you gave a chance for you know, right-wing media and the president's own operation to try and discredit the thing as a political, uh, as a political operation. So I think moving quickly, sticking to the fundamental facts here, which are damning, uh, and moving forward is a smart thing because she knows that at the end of the day, highly unlikely that the U.S. Senate is going to convict this president. So the impeachment, in a sense, is an official rebuke. Do it. Uh, and move on. I think that's a smart strategy. And beyond the, the, the uh, schedule that we've heard is that they could have articles of impeachment ready by October, which yeah. is in a few weeks. Moving and very what's, fast. And this is what's so confusing is that there are still all of these questions. Obviously, the whistleblower complaint raises so many questions. There are half, as you point out, more than half a dozen people in the White House that I know lawmakers would like to interview because they're the ones who gave the whistleblower the information. So how are they going to wrap that up by in throughout October? Well, you have the president admitting to what he's being accused of. We've seen the transcript, right? If they thought the transcript was going to be exculpatory, that wasn't the case, given that we saw the whistleblower complaint yesterday. Now, the president 
president and the administration were saying, listen, this was all hearsay, that this whistleblower even admitted to not being there and participating and being in the room during the phone call. That being said, a lot of what uh, the whistleblower complained about from the phone call was matched by what we saw from this transcript. So I think that makes things a, a lot easier. And I think for the American public to digest, having the president's own words right there, as opposed to the president not testifying or, or not agreeing to meet with Bob Mueller, you have the president's uh, words out for the American public to hear. And I also think coming from a president who said, I'm campaigning on America first, this is all about prioritizing America, there was nothing in this phone call that, that moved American policy forward, right? This had nothing to do with promoting American international policy. This had to do with everything with promoting his 2020 campaign. All right, Bianca, David, thank you very much for being with us this morning. This whistleblower's identity remains a mystery, but in a matter of weeks, it has triggered an impeachment inquiry into the president. CNN's Athena Jones joins us now with a look at how whistleblowers really have, Athena, changed the course of history. Well, they absolutely have, and good morning. Th we wouldn't be having this conversation without this whistleblower and, of course, a Democratic-led uh, House. Uh, so this person is, is, is a big deal and key to all of this. Just the latest example in a long line of people who have taken actions that have helped shape history. We still don't know who the whistleblower is, but the complaint's contents have catapulted Washington into an impeachment inquiry into President Trump. The now declassified document alleging Trump tried to get Ukraine to interfere with the 2020 U.S. election. With all the talk of a whistleblower in Washington in the past few days, what does that exactly mean? It's defined as an employee who brings wrongdoing by an employer or other employees to the attention of a government or law enforcement agency and who was commonly vested by statute with rights and remedies for retaliation. In this broad category of people, one of the most famous in American history, Mark Felt, better known as Deep Throat. The FBI informant helped take down the Nixon administration, divulging crucial information about Watergate. And in 1971, military analyst Daniel Ellsberg leaked top-secret Department of Defense information about why the U.S. entered the Vietnam War. William Binney and Thomas Drake were NSA officials who informed the Inspector General about government surveillance programs they perceived as invading citizens' privacy by monitoring their Internet activity. FBI agent Colleen Rowley flagged then-FBI Director Robert Mueller about intelligence failures before the 9-11 attacks. Or Sergeant Joseph Darby, who told military investigators in 2004 about inmate abuse at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. Not everyone who blew the whistle on the government has been rewarded. For some, it meant the end of their careers, or even worse. Winner's willful, purposeful disclosure caused exceptionally grave damage to U.S. national security. Former NSA contractor Reality Winner leaked a secret report about Russian hacking of the 2016 election to a news organization. Now she's serving a sentence of more than five years after pleading guilty to leaking that classified information to the media. Winner will serve a term of incarceration that will give pause to others who are entrusted with our country's sensitive national security information. The Air Force veteran's mother telling CNN in March she's being painted as evil. I think that we as Americans deserved that proof. And, and so how, how is it that she put us in danger by giving us that proof? Winner's the first person arrested under the Trump administration using the Espionage Act, established in 1917 during World War I, originally intended to prosecute anyone interfering in U.S. war efforts. So people like spies. In modern times, it's the same law that sent Edward Snowden into exile in Russia. The former intelligence contractor accused of leaking NSA documents revealing a secret global surveillance program. These leaks have inflamed and sensationalized for ignoble purposes the work that intelligence community does lawfully under strict oversight and compliance. Earlier this month, Snowden said he'd like to return to the U.S. if he's guaranteed a fair trial. I'm not asking for a parade. I'm not asking for a pardon. I'm not asking for a pass. Uh, what I'm asking for is a fair trial. And this is the bottom line that any American should require. And in May, the Justice Department indicting WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange of 18 Espionage Act counts, ordering him extradited to the U.S. after spending seven years at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Assange charged with conspiring to help former intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning, who spent two separate terms behind bars in connection with leaking secret Defense Department documents in 2010, published to WikiLeaks' website. 
President Obama commuted her sentence and she was released in 2017. Manning telling CNN in May she has no regrets. I did what I did with the information that I had, the knowledge that I had, and the tools and resources that I had at the time. In 2010, when the, all, this ha and all this happened, it was a very different you know, landscape. And it's important to point out the difference between the whistleblower involved in this Ukraine matter and folks like Julian Assange and Reality Winner, who face criminal prosecution. Uh, they leaked or helped leak secrets for publication. That's a lot different than this case, where the person went through the channels within the government established by law. So who counts as a whistleblower, we're seeing, is somewhat subjective. As James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, put it, one man's leaker is another man's whistleblower. No, there are legal definitions here. Absolutely. And to be clear... The person in this case, as you so correctly note, is protected by the legal definition of whistleblower. Joseph McGuire, the acting DNI yesterday, made clear that this person followed the letter of the law completely. Right. Very, very different. Athena, thank you very much.